this is a house of help. Amen. Not to not to help the perfect, but to help the human. Yeah. If you're human, there's God ready to help you. Amen. Me and Josh believe that. <laughs> I'll put it differently. If you're here, there's a God that wants to help you. Amen. And here's what's so so neat about it. He's a God that allows us into his presence. And he's a God that's good to us. And when you look at how holy he is and how unholy we are, it ought to make us more thankful that he's good to us. Amen. Blessed to see everybody out in the house of God. I've uh, got a good crowd today and we thank God for it. So glad you're here. Uh, I'd love to let you know God's been good to you. Amen. Uh, we've got prayers answered in the house today. Uh, we're happy about that. Uh, to say this, we've been revival this week. Uh, thank you for your prayers. Isn't it something, I can say this, I think for all of us, how long it feels from Sunday to Sunday? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. We were here last weekend, and, but boy, it seems like a month since last Sunday. And we were on our way home last night, and I just told Faith, I said, I'm looking so forward to getting home. And yeah. she's, she kind of thought I was talking about our house and the dog. And <laughs> I said, no, I said, I want to get back to the home church. Uh, well, Chase was just here last week. I don't know about you guys. I, I, I need this place. Yeah, yeah. I do. I need this place. What a blessing to be in God's house today. What a blessing to worship. Uh, anybody this morning, you got a testimony you'd like to brag on the Lord? Uh, got a song on your heart you'd like to sing? Anybody?
we got caught up and how human we are, none of us will be here at church. We got consumed over how much we mess up. There's none of us worthy to be here. But we've got a God that's dedicated to us. Don't, don't feel bad because God's dedicated to you. Be appreciative He's dedicated to you. Right? He doesn't regret loving you. He does not regret loving you. Brother Bob? Yeah, I'd like to thank God for being uh, in myself and, and our, our family. Uh, much appreciated. Thank you. There's so many times I hear uh, kind of wrong stories thank people. I uh, just experienced I had went to Walmart the other day and uh, picked up a few things. On the way out, I did self check and that, you know, you get cash back. At $40, well, me and my aunt and the boys in my house, cost a little round, got my little shoes together and went out to my bed. Uh, I sat down and uh, I didn't get that money out of it. Anyway, I went back in and, of course, wasn't there. Passed the lady that kind of attended that area. Uh, if she had had a turn to her name, she said, no. So she said she would check with her supervisor. So I did. And she had been engaged, you know, she, nobody could have been in so, you know, that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of accepted it, and uh, she said, just a minute, let me go up to the office. And she went up to the office, and she came back for $40. Wow. Somebody had turned that in. I kind of reaffirmed my faith in Father, grace 
is better than we deserve. Father, I thank you for who you are. Thank you for who you are to us, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for amazing grace. I thank you, Lord, for people with desire to come to God's house. I pray for Miss Naomi today. God, as she's sick, I pray you'd heal her. Lord God, I pray for Brother Cody. God, as he's got this job opportunity. Lord, we believe as a church that you can bless. We believe you can help. Amen. Not just the job situation, but Caitlin and Hudson. Father, we believe you for that. Lord Jesus, there's, there's been death. Lord, there's folks that have suffered loss through fires. Lord, there's folks with sickness. God, there's families that are hurting today. Lord, I believe you for all of it. Lord, I believe you for I believe you for help. I believe you for healing. I believe you for forgiveness. I believe you for salvation. Jesus, we believe you for the restoration of our people. Lord, prepare us if we're going into revival season. Lord, prepare Brother Callahan. Father, I pray today, God, help lives be changed in your house. Help us be encouraged. Father, and it's just in my spirit to say this, help us be resurrected. God, that's my prayer. Lord, the tomb is empty. God, we can live and have life and have it more abundantly. Bless everything that would happen today, this evening service. Father, I pray, do what we can. I'm trusting you, Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. 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 You can be seated. Anyone this morning, anything on the heart? Power and great glory. 
And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up, lift up your heads, for your redemption draw it nigh. Look with us in the book of Revelation, chapter number 6. I'm happy to let you know Jesus is soon coming. Yeah. You think if we're born again, they've been a couple more said amen right there. Amen. I'm happy to know I'm going to heaven. Yeah. Revelation chapter number 6 this morning. Verse number 15. We'll start verse 14. Revelation 6 verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll, when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island removed out of their place. And the kings of earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bondman, and every free man, hid themselves in the dens, and in the rocks and mountains. And all these people, these mighty people, said to the mountains and the rocks, Please fall on us, and hide us from the face of him, that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, for the great day of His wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? That's the reading of God's Word. You can be seated if you would. about 
about humanity. How do we know that Jesus chose us? Because before the time began, Jesus decided himself, I'm going to give my life for humanity. If that's not awesome God, I don't know what is. And, and he decides to love humanity. He decides to never give up on humanity. Well, Chase, he didn't know humanity then. I want to let you know, Jesus knows the end from the beginning. He knows where we're at now. I, I want to remind you, friend, when we look at people that uh, date setters, you know, to the year 2000 came around. And everybody said, well, the time's going to end in the year 2000. And here we are 22 years later. I want to let you know Jesus knows the time's going to end. Yeah. So there, there's no such thing as date setters. Jesus, he knows the end from the beginning. He knows our lives. He knows the outcomes. He knows the Psalms 139 put it. He knows our down settings. And he knows our uprisings. He knows our failures. He knows our successes. He knows our weak points. He knows our strong points. He knows the very hairs of our head. He has numbered them. That means he knows how many you have. And he knows how many you have left. Right. Mm -hmm. All the people ought to be saying, help us, God. <laughs> but I, I want to say this to you. Jesus chooses us before time begins. And the road of royalty will start in the Old Testament. And, and, and I want to let you know something. Uh, the Bible teaches me that anyone that tries to go to heaven any other way than Jesus Christ is the same as a thief and a robber. The Bible teaches me and it teaches you in the book of John chapter number 14. Jesus would say this. And he said the words I am at least seven times in our Bible that we know of. I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. I want to let you know that the only way to get to heaven is Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. I, I want to say this to you today. Well, why is it Jesus? I want to let you know the only perfect person that has ever been is Jesus Christ. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I want to say this to you. And for years we have had sacrifices uh, in the Old Testament that would uh, atone for sin. Uh, when we had the tabernacle days, and you stay with me, we'll get to the meat of the message. In the tabernacle days, so many sacrifices were given every single day uh, that would help people get ready for a day of atonement. And the day of atonement would come one day out of the calendar year uh, where a priest would get to go behind the veil and he would ask God's forgiveness for everyone's sin. And here's the problem. If that one person sinned, if he was not right with God, when he stepped behind the veil, God struck him dead. Right, right. Amen. Uh, well, Chase, that's a bad thing. It is a bad thing. Uh, can I just let you know something? That if you're here this morning and you feel like you're right with God because somebody told you you're right with God, you are trusting a sinner. Amen. Uh, if you're here this morning and you feel like you're doing what's right uh, because somebody told you you're doing what's right, you're trusting human beings. If you're here this morning and you feel like you're going to heaven uh, because a preacher told you that or because a pastor uh, maybe told you that or a deacon or uh, maybe your mom or your dad told you that you were all right, I, I want to let you know, friend, you are still trusting a human being. Uh, well, Chase, are you saying that salvation is greater uh, than what a human being can give you? I'm letting you know that the only thing that human beings can offer is religion. I'm letting you know the only thing that human beings can offer is church membership. I'm letting you know the only thing church members uh, that religion can offer you is water baptism. The only thing we can offer uh, is a do better. Uh, the only thing we can offer is counseling. Uh, but can I let you know what Jesus is offering? It's more than church membership. It's a place in heaven. Amen. Uh, what Jesus is offering is more than do better. Uh, Jesus is offering a changed life. I'm letting you know what Jesus is offering. Uh, it's more than a uh, pick me up. I'm telling you, Jesus is offering uh, a comforter. Uh, Jesus said in the book of John, I'm 
Amen. Road of royalty would continue all the way in the book of Isaiah. You have a Bible in your hand that's 66 books long. But inside that Bible, you have a small Bible. The book of Isaiah is 66 chapters long. The first half of the book of Isaiah would go over the law and it would build up to the prophets. The second half of the book of Isaiah would lead up to Jesus Christ that's on his way. The book of Isaiah would lay it out and would say this, that he was led as a lamb up to the slaughter. Amen. The, the, the transgression of our sin was laid upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. You there? This Jesus, can I just give you, he's the only way. Can I just tell you, he's the only way. Can I just let you know one more time, he's the only way. This road of royalty would just continue on, and, and as God would beg and he would plead, with the children of Israel to acknowledge who he is and to worship him and to live for him. And the children of Israel, what we have in the Old Testament, I, I, I want to say this to you. If you ever wonder, can I ask you, do you ever wonder if God loves you? Anybody? Do you ever wonder if he's ever going to give up on you? You read the book, the Old Testament, and how God continues to labor with the nation and with the people of Israel. When they turn their back on Him, He's still there for them. But there is a time that God gets offended. God gets offended as we look in the book of Malachi. And this is what He says. If you'll give me a tenth of what you have, and we went over tithing before. But if you'll give me a tenth of what you have, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour you out a blessing that even your heart can't contain. And Israel looked at God and said, we will not do it. Amen. And at that moment, God realized who he is. Uh, can I say this to you? Uh, and, and I'm going I'm to say something real blunt, real strict. If there's anybody uh, that's a great spouse and they get treated like a horrible spouse, It'll be a bad thing when that great spouse realizes how good they are. If there's anybody that's a good parent and gets treated like a bad parent, it'll be a bad day when that good parent realizes how good they are. If there's anybody that's good kids and they get treated like bad kids, it'll be a real bad day when those kids realize they don't deserve to get treated how they're being treated. Can I tell you what's going to be a bad day, and it was in the book of Malachi, and it will be again, when God realizes that he does not deserve to be treated how he's being treated, that's going to be a bad day. God looks at the people of Israel, and it snaps back to him, and he says, wait a minute. For almost 4,000 years now, I have labored with you, I have loved you, I've listened to you complain on me, I've listened to you talk bad against me, I've watched you as you've chosen false gods, I've watched and I've loved you, and I've fed you, and I've done all these things, and nothing's ever been good enough for you, and you know what? You never thought I'd ignore you, you never thought that I just wouldn't quit giving when you didn't appreciate it, you never thought I'd do this stuff. You always wanted me to talk to you, even though you didn't appreciate me. So now, I'm quiet. 400 years of silence goes by. God never says a word. Can I put this in a real conversation for a minute? What if somebody just keeps telling you how much they love you? And you just keep looking at them saying, you don't love me, you hate me. After a while, that person's finally going to realize that no matter what they do for you, it's not good enough. Right. 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 Yeah, it's true. God goes silent for 400 years. They hear nothing from God. They've got long prophets. Book of Matthew, we hear a baby cry. You still with me? Book of Matthew, we hear a baby cry, wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Who's the baby? Jesus. The road of royalty is led from heaven down to earth. Can I say this to you one more time? 
The person that left heaven for you is the only person that can take you to heaven. Don't worry, we're getting close to the meat of the message. We're getting close to these fellas. Twelve years old, Larry. DCS should have got called when Jesus is twelve years old. Mary and Joseph take Jesus to town, Bob, and take him to town. Get all the way there in front of doctors and teachers and everybody. And John's right in the middle of it. They lose him. Hey, listen. I understand maybe a kid goes off to Walmart, does something, you lose him. But Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. They didn't lose Marcus. They didn't lose Dwayne. They didn't lose Kelly. They lost Jesus. Hey, can I just let you know something? If Mary, the mother of Jesus, who gave birth to him after a virgin birth, if she can lose contact with Jesus, don't you dare think that you can. Right. Chase, I just can't believe after how good God's been to me. I can't believe that I let him down. Well, honey, angels were sent to blessed Mary. You're going to become a child. And she responded to him very, very properly. Can you hear in the Hebrew? Lord, how does this be? Seeing that I know not a man. I don't know about any of y'all, but if angels would have showed up to y'all and said that, mm -hmm. I have a feeling you wouldn't have handled it that well. Right, right. If Mary can lose contact with Jesus, you can too. Yeah, yeah. Amen. And they go three days back home. And they get home, get settled down, and you don't know what they realize. You're here, I'm here. Do you hear anything holy in the house? Well, no. Where to go? And for the first time, they could say it in honesty. Oh, my God. And they went back and they found Jesus answering teachers' questions and answering doctors' questions. And... Jesus looks at Mary and says, Know ye not that I must be about my father's business. Are you still with me? Yeah. Have already gone too long. Next time we see him, he's 30 years old. It's time for his ministry. <coughs> and I remind you once more, Jesus is soon coming. Can I remind you, Jesus is soon coming? I'm going to help you. Jesus is soon coming. Amen. What's he going to come back as? Is he going to come back as the fable out of the Old Testament? No, sir. Is he going to come back as the babe in a manger? No, sir. Is he going to come back as a teenage boy that everybody thought was a ruddy little rat? There's no way that he knows all this stuff. No, sir. Is he going to come back as a 30-year-old that just started his ministry? No, sir. Will he come back as the one that was crucified, as thousands say he's not real? No, sir. Will he come back weak? Will he come back meek? Will he come back low? Will he come back and allow people to walk on him? Will he come back and allow people to disrespect him? Will he come back? He will come back, but it will be in all of his glory. And all of his power. Amen. He goes to the cross. What a moment. Hey, can I say this to you? I pray that you're with me this morning when we get to meet the message and we'll be done. <coughs> Parents, can we talk just for a second, you and I? How many of you feel like you've done a lot for your kids? You can be honest, I ain't going to poke at you. How many of you have shed tears for your kids? Amen. That day was more hands went up for that one. Amen. How many of you have lost sleep for your kids? <laughs> Parents, by the way, the majority of your kids are here today. So can I ask you something? How many of you feel like that if your kids actually knew how much you hurt for them, it would change them. And how would you like it if the kids looked at 
you and said, you act all holy in business, but you've done nothing for me. Can I say this to you? It's one thing if you've done a lot for your kids, but you're not a good human being to them now. Can I tell you a problem with the church today, a problem with Chase Lay, a problem with you, a problem with everybody in this building, a problem with all Christians? We're looking at Jesus like he's never cried for us. We're looking at Jesus like he's never suffered for us. We're looking at him and we're treating him like he's never wept for us, like he's never suffered, like he's never had to beg, like he's never hurt, like he's never been in anguish, like he's never been in tears. Is it okay if I ask you? Do you think Jesus is worth more than what America's given? Chase, I feel like you're wasting time today. Hey, you just chalk it up to another Sunday morning. Is it all right if I ask you? Do you feel like... And you parents that raised your hand and said, boy, if my kids know what... If they would have knew, if they, would have, if they were able to know what I went through for them, it changed them. And can I ask you something? If we could take a look at how much Jesus has gone through for us, do you think it changed us? Can I say something? Parents, don't expect everybody to remember your suffering when you forget Jesus' suffering. I, I want to move on because I need to get quicker than where I'm going. Hey, how many of you know Muhammad? Anybody know of Muhammad? Died, right? Guess where he's at? Still in the grave. Buddha. Buddhism, right? Died. Guess where he's at? Grave. Every god that's ever been looked up to died in the grave. And if you go to the grave, Eden, and, and, and you find that grave, and, 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 and Ryan, you, you go to these, the, these, these ones that have been looked up to, and you dig, you don't know what you can find? You'll still find them. Yeah. Anybody there? Yeah. Go over to the Holy Land, though, Scott. Walk in that tomb. That's where they put Jesus. Yeah. Hey, can I let you know some good news? Hey, Amen. I feel like I've killed you so far. Let me help us a little bit. Jesus has never liked these things. Not once. John 11. Lazarus is dead. And what was the instructions he said? Roll you away. Jesus gives up and goes on the cross. And what do they put at the mouth of the tomb? Mitchell, Jesus said, I don't know what it is about stones. But when they're blocking what I can do, I don't much care for them. Go to the mouth of the tomb. And Rob, this is what you'll find. Walk in there, Bob. And you'll know what you'll find. How many of you consider yourself a Christian? That's about half of you. Boy, that's awkward. <laughs> Just letting you know you're in a Christian church. You're Christians not because it's your faith, but because you're Christ-like. Who's our God? Help me. Christ. You go in that tomb, Chris, and guess who you won't find? You won't find Christ. He's the only one, only one, Jerry, that's defeated death, defeated hell, and defeated the grave. Hey, can I just tell you something? If you're going to hook your chariot up to somebody, I ain't going to hook my chariot up to somebody that couldn't defeat death. I ain't going to hook my chariot up to somebody that died a good person. I'm going to hook my chariot up to somebody that, man, like, not only could they overcome sin, not only could they overcome sorrow, not only could they conquer the persecutors, but, man, like, I'm going to hook my chariot up to somebody that even death couldn't hold back. I, I, I'm going to hook my chariot up to somebody that man alive, well, even the devil couldn't hold down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hook up, I'm going to link up to the God that cannot be defeated by 
time. He can't be defeated by temptation. He is the victor. He's not the victim. Let's get to the message. Acts chapter number 1. Jesus is saying this. Anybody glad he ascended? Yeah. He ascended. Acts chapter number 1. We're almost done. I'm going to preach about a 15 minute message. Ain't you glad? He ascends. Acts chapter number 1. And he leaves with a promise, Jerry. Yes, Two men in white apparel can they, they look at all the disciples. Joshua's are standing there. Sydney, you, you men of Galilee, why stand you here gazing? Mm -hmm. Amen. This same Jesus, which you've seen go before you, he shall return yeah. in like manner as you have seen him go. Mm -hmm. Just to let anybody know, He's left, but he will return. Amen. In like manner, Brittany, in like manner. What happened directly after that? We're in the message now. The day the stones became helpless, Hillary, the very first time that people heard Jesus is coming back, the very first time, you want to know what happened? 3,000 people got saved. Second time they heard it, 2,000 more got set right. You ready? I feel like I've done a pretty positive message so far. Mm -hmm. How many of y'all are saved? Yes. Can I be your pastor for just a second? Thank you, bud. Can I be your pastor for just a second? Mm -hmm. Book of Acts, chapter 2, they tell them Jesus is coming back. 3,000 get saved. Right after that, Jesus is coming back. 2,000 more get saved. I tell you, Jesus is coming back and he gets more amens. I go in revival and Jesus is coming back. There'll be a few folks. Amen. I tell you, sorrow is going to end. Well, praise God. I tell you, you better get on fire for Jesus because eternity is getting real close. Yeah. Yeah. What Chase preach on that, God? <laughs> he preached on the coming of the Lord. That's a Sunday waste because how does that help me in the real life? How does that help me? Let's preach just for a few moments. The day these things become helpless. Am I all right? I hear everybody good? Preach on, Pastor. The day these things become helpless. How far have we got? This is how far we've got. I want to preach you three things, three stones that cannot help you when he returns. I want to remind you one more time. If you're here today and you're not saved, you can be saved. Yes. Will that help you in your everyday life? Absolutely. Yep. How many of you are better human beings because you say? Oh, How many of you would either be dead or hopeless if you wasn't saved? Hey, the only way I can preach this is to get rid of some theology, okay? There's a theology that says when Jesus returns, he'll set his kingdom up on earth for a thousand years. And in that time period, people that have chosen to be lost will be given another opportunity. I want to let you know, if Jesus is going to do that, that makes him more gracious than he is holy. Can I just let you know, Jesus died on the cross so atheists could be atheists. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross so Satanists could make fun of Jesus. Jesus died on the cross that way people could have the opportunity.
opportunity to look at Jesus and say, if that's who he is, he hurt my family, he hurt my kids, he's taken from my family, he's taken from me. If that's who he is, I don't want him. And to think that Jesus is going to return once more just to look at all those people and say, you know what? I'm sorry for everything I ever did to you. Now that I've apologized, will you get right with me? Does that sound like God to anybody? Everybody okay? Killing it little by little. Jesus returns. I want to let you know, and, and this is going to get a little dark, but it, it'll be okay. Jesus returns. If you give, can I just give you some definitions of born again? Say. Hey, I feel like if you say, they don't be some definite. Well, that's who I am. Some words of being born again say. Not going to hell. I've been changed. I've been freed. I'm no longer the same person. Jesus is my best friend. I know him and he knows me. Jesus returns. There's no middle ground. Chase, I'm not sure. Jesus returns. You either saved or you lost. Is that the truth? I'm going to give you three stones. There's one, there's two, there's three. Some stones that will not be able to help you when he returns. Chris, I look at that stone. Help me. Please help me. Please help me. I'm in trouble, I need your help. Please help me. And you all know what that stone just continues to do, Miss Patty? The Bible said in that last day, they'll run the rocks and the mountains. Right. Yeah. Follow us. Right. He's here. He's here. Amen. The rock of religion, the stone of religion, will not be able to help you when Jesus comes back. Amen. That's right. Amen. I'm going to stay on this one short, I promise you. We're not done with treasures by no means. What do you mean the rock of religion? Jesus said in that day they would look at me and say, Have I not done many wonderful works in thy name? Have I not cast out demons in thy name? Right. And Jesus looked at them and said, Depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. Right. But Jesus, I preached messages. But Jesus, you all know on that day who Jesus turns into? He turns into the stone.
as a tree falls, so shall it lie. Jesus, my parents, they were saved. Jesus, my dad was a preacher. Jesus, my mom was a Sunday school teacher. Religion, please tell them, my dad, tell them about the, my dad, the messages my dad preached. Jesus, religion, would you, would you tell them, would you tell them about all the works my family's done in the church? Religion, would you just tell him? And religion says, I can't do it. I'm letting you know, my friend. The stone of religion will always fail you. The rock of Jesus Christ will never fail you. Amen. Amen. Am I preaching right so far? Amen. One down, two go. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jessica. I'm almost done. Amen. Rocks are what we stand on. Rocks are what we lean on. Rocks are what we trust in. Hey, can I ask you something? <clears throat> are you trusting your faith or are you trusting the God of your faith? Anyway. How many of you would count yourself a family person? How many of you would say that you're really nothing without your family? All you family people, and I'm one of them too, Goss, I really am. But there was a time, Chris, I need to get more again. I need to get out of hell, Karen. Dad, I need your help. Please save me. Mama, I need you to get me out of hell. Please save me. Family, I need you. Family, I need you. Family, I need you. When it comes down to you getting saved, the only thing your family can do is pray for you. Can I ask you something? How many of you have ever been apart from your family? How many of you have ever been let down by your family? Can I tell you somebody that you've never been apart from? Jesus Christ. Can I let you know somebody's never let you down? Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> I'll give you the third stone. We'll wrap up. My goodness. Who I am. God, I want all of my good works to tell you how good I am. I'm a good person. And all you good works, just look and say, without Jesus, still ain't good. What all could the third stone be? It could be the future. What? Can I just give you this? And we're getting ready to close. How many of you have ever had good intentions, but those intentions did not pan out? I'm, I'm leading that way. Someone will go ahead and go there. You all know what is in hell? Lake of fire and brimstone. You all know what folks are in hell with? They're in hell with their stones. Rob, if I could have understood more. Jesus, you know that I didn't understand everything about salvation. Jesus, you know that I have struggles understanding this. And, 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 and Jesus, you know that if, if, if I could have had one more opportunity. And Jesus, you know that I couldn't make it to church that day. And Jesus, you know. And Jesus, you know. And all of my excuses and all of my intentions. I need my excuses to look at Jesus and tell him why I'm not living for him. I need my excuses to look at Jesus and tell him why I'm choosing my sin over him. I need my excuses.
excuses to look at Jesus and tell him why I refuse to get saved. Tell him why I refuse to be a Christian parent. Tell him why I refuse to be a Christian son, a Christian daughter. Tell him why I refuse hope to be the preacher God's made me be. Tell him why I refuse hope to be a victorious saint. Excuses. Speak up for me. Anybody there? Yeah. I thank you for letting me preach and teach today. I appreciate it. I'm going to give you bad news. Okay? I feel like the last 15 minutes have been bad news. Here's some more bad news. Hey, come back tonight and we'll get good news.
that the very stones that we've allowed to get between us and God, on that day, they're all gone. Hey, can I ask you something today? Do you want to know some things that people run to? They run to their sin. Chase, I know I need to get right with God. But I can't handle it. I can't handle the misery, so I'm going to run to my alcohol. I can't handle the misery, so I'm going to run to my drugs. I'm going to run to my boyfriend. I'm going to run to my girlfriend. Chase, that doesn't make it sin. I'm letting you know there's not a human, there's not a drug, there's not an alcohol, there's not a sex, there's not a website, there's nothing that can help you like God can. You don't care. We're getting ready to go in for invitation. I don't know how good or how bad I've done today. You don't care. Before we go into invitation, every head bowed, every eye closed, and you don't care. God bless you. I want to say this this morning. There's folks that's raised their hand and said, Chase, I'm not running to be with God. Can I let you know we're getting ready to have altar call? And the only thing standing between you and getting right with God are the stones. That's the only thing standing between you and getting right with God are the stones. Can I let you know, there's been multiple people that raised their hands to chase. I've got lost family members. I've got lost people in my life. I'm glad I got them, but I want to go to heaven with them. If there's anybody in the house, boy, you want to bring those people to God. God, I'm sorry that I've failed to forget. I, I, I've failed. I forgot them. Lord, make me more who you want me to be so I can be who they need me to be. They spoke to the house this morning. And by the way, I'll let you know, the only thing standing between you and being who God wants you to be for your family, who God wants you to be for your friends, your community, your co-workers, the only thing standing between you and that is the stones. That's it. There's about four of you. Raise your hand. Never been saved. You've got interest got interest. Chase, what do I do? You've got the faith that you wouldn't be here today. You sat under the preaching. Chase, you knew I was going to be here. No, I didn't. I didn't know I supposed to preach. I gave what God gave, and you're here. I'm letting you know that from the oldest of you to the youngest, you can be saved today. Chase, how do I do that? You come before God. You can bow at the altar. You don't want to pray at the altar. Raise your hand. Somebody come back. I'll come back and pray with you. You pray until that fear of hell leaves you. That insecurity leaves you. You give God your life. And the Bible teaches us you'll get peace. Is that the truth? I promise you, not on my word, on God's word, you can leave saved today. What's standing between me and salvation, Chase? Just the stones. Just the stones. You can leave here knowing you say, if these folks need to get right with God, if these folks need to bring people to God, you need to pray. You need to repent so you can be who God's made you to be. Why don't you do that? If you're here this morning, you lost. You need to be saved. Come to an altar. God will meet you here. There's people ready to pray with you. Let's look up. Folks need to move this morning. Is Jesus worthy moving? Let's say today. God bless you.
Hey, you know what the Bible teaches me? Go into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that God's house be full. You ever wondered what that actually looks like? I wonder if it's people with suits and ties. I wonder if it's people that got it all together. Or I wonder if it's the people that need help. I wonder if it's the trouble. Church ain't for the perfect. Church is for people that need Jesus and love Jesus. Hey, I say this a lot. If you're still with me, can you say amen? amen. Say this a lot. Happy to say it again. Hey, I, I believe there's folks that when it comes down to all the call, I believe anxiety plays a real big part. No. You ready to lose your spirituality for a second? I believe there's some folks that would really, really love doing business with Jesus, but that thought of walking out in front of people, that's no go. That's no go. Is anybody in the house? You want to do business with God? You want to be saved? You want to talk about things? I'm happy to talk to you at the church. Well, Chase, what are you going to do? You going to take us in the office? You going to, no, 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 no. Well, Chase, I just need you to tell me what to say. Can I let you know? If I tell you what to say when you pray to Jesus, guess whose heart that came from? How's God going to answer your prayer when it ain't your prayer? You want to talk after church? I'm happy to. And there's been many of you. We've talked after church. You know how it works. It, it's no pressure. It's no judgment. It's nothing critical. Hey, all you souls, heart Marines, look at me. We're done. How many of you would love after church to get a one call that somebody got saved? Yeah. Amen. Don't you just love those one calls when they come through? And... This is a message for the souls, heart family. <laughs> and then wouldn't you like to hear a voice on the other that's not? voice that somebody else's and says, hey guys, this is so and so. I just want to let you know I got saved today. Amen. Amen. You know what I feel that do for? We had a good Sunday night crowd. <laughs> Did nobody say amen? We probably just had a regular Sunday night crowd. <laughs> God's good to us. Amen. Anybody this morning got anything on your heart? Easter is uh, the week after revival. I think it's the 17th. Uh, so be much in prayer for Easter. No peanuts or peanut butter in case Carly's there. Or at least. Do we do that in the cube? We do that. That's a thing? Okay. That's a thing. Vacation Bible School is coming up. Um, we're looking. We're having a set date yet. I'm going to do this. Last three weeks of July. We're looking sometime in July. Uh, we're going to have a weekend vacation Bible school here at the church. If you would like to help with that, I would encourage you to talk to one of the goals, talk to Caitlin, talk to me, talk to somebody in that area. Um, I appreciate church, but I believe it's good for you to have fun too. Absolutely. So we're looking for a Bible school this year, somewhere in that last three weeks of July. So take a look at it. Um, men's
Wednesday's Bible study. Uh, we're taking a look at the date. Won't be having it this week. Thursday night is Bible study. Richie has been upset all week long. I didn't get to do Bible study. But as soon as I came, he didn't even look at me and say hello. He just he looked at me and he said, Bible study? <laughs> God willing, we'll be back on too Thursday night. Um, just give me his candle. <laughs> you upset him? <laughs> hey, I, I, I want to say this to you. We'll be dismissed. Thank you for staying with us. It's, it, I know it's, I went long today. I appreciate your kind patience. If they somebody with you uh, and you concerned about them as far as salvation or need to talk, hey, isn't it something fear can shut your mouth? Yeah. Ask them. Hey, would you like to talk to somebody? Uh, we've got, and this will make me sound like horrible, church. We've got good preachers from church, good deacons. Uh, it'd be all right, four or five get saved today. But about three of us it would be. Amen. God bless you. Looking forward to coming back in tonight. Please be in prayer for us. Come back tonight. Hey.